You know, step on a crack, break your mother's back. It doesn't work. I know. <laughs> Abracadabra, one, two, three. You tell me, Rose. <laughs> I know that. I can't believe these dumb cops would think anyone would pay money to sleep with you. Friends, I just can't stand the thought of leaving you. <laughs> <laughs> Nearly four decades have passed since The Golden Girls made its mark on sitcom history, sparking a revolution in the genre. You have no idea just how many performances he has been giving these last two weeks. Even though many facts about this famous show are known, there are still some interesting things to discover. And over and picking up something seductively, then the two of you sneak up behind him and give him a karate chop. While big fans may already be familiar with the basics, the series, which follows the lives of four elderly women embracing life together, boasts a plethora of talent both on screen and behind the scenes. Rose Nyland? No one if I start acting like her, pull the plug! <laughs> Join us as we delve into some lesser-known details about the Golden Girls that might surprise even the most devoted viewers. Initially, Betty White was selected to portray the character of Blanche. Betty White's journey towards embodying the endearing Rose Nyland in The Golden Girls was a fascinating narrative, characterized by introspection regarding her past roles and a deliberate shift in her on-screen persona. Prior to stepping into the role of Rose, White had already left an indelible mark on television, most notably as the neighborhood seductress Sue Ann Nivens on The Mary Tyler Moore Show. Sue Ann's cheeky character showcased White's comedic brilliance and her talent for breathing life into unforgettable personas. However, when the opportunity arose to join the Golden Girls, producers were faced with a unique challenge. They recognized that casting White in a similar man-chasing role might pigeonhole her and overshadow the distinctiveness of Rose. To circumvent this potential pitfall and highlight White's versatility, a bold decision was made to re-envision her character. In an unexpected turn, the seductive persona was set aside, making room for the gentle and somewhat naive Rose Nyland. This reinvention allowed White to showcase a different aspect of her talent, crafting a character that endeared audiences with her innocence and sincerity. The juxtaposition between Rose and Sue Ann underscored White's versatility as an actress, and ensured that Rose emerged as a singular and refreshing presence on television. Despite the departure from her previous character, White embraced the challenge wholeheartedly, infusing Rose with her trademark warmth and humor. Her dedication to the role and her commitment to shaping a character that would resonate with viewers solidified her status as a beloved performer. The decision to cast White as Rose not only demonstrated the astuteness of the show's producers, but also reaffirmed White's ability to captivate audiences with her adaptability and charisma. Elaine Stritch was considered for the role of Dorothy. In the casting saga of the Golden Girls, one intriguing chapter revolves around Elaine Stritch's audition for the role of Dorothy. Although B. Arthur ultimately clinched the iconic part, Stritch's reminiscences offer a fascinating peek into the audition dynamics and the hurdles she faced. Stritch candidly shared her disappointment at missing out on the role, citing a palpable disconnect with the writer right from the start. She felt that the writer didn't quite warm up to her during the audition. Despite her best efforts to charm the writer, Stritch found herself unable to bridge the gap, attributing it to a clash in sensibilities. She revealed that the writer, whose identity remains undisclosed, failed to appreciate her brand of humor and took issue with her colorful language. This frank revelation shines a light on the intricate and sometimes capricious nature of casting decisions. Stritch's comedic flair and her penchant for colorful language, traits that defined her both on stage and off, may have clashed with the specific vision the writer held for the character of Dorothy. The audition process, as Stritch's account illustrates, can be a delicate dance of personalities and perceptions. Even for seasoned performers like Stritch, securing a role is not solely about talent, but also about how well one aligns with the creative vision of those in charge. In this instance, despite Stritch's undeniable talent and experience, she ultimately fell short of meeting the expectations set by the writer. Estelle Getty struggled with stage fright. Estelle Getty, the talent behind the beloved Sophia Petrillo on The Golden Girls, brought a distinct and lovable energy to the show. Yet, amidst her seasoned career, 
Getty grappled with a formidable foe, stage fright. Getty's path to acting was unconventional. She didn't embrace the craft until the age of 55, and when she stepped into the world of the Golden Girls at 62, she brought with her a wealth of life experience and an unexpected companion fear. The fear of performing, the fear of falling short haunted her despite her evident skill. In a candid admission, Getty shared her inner turmoil, revealing, I live with fear as a constant companion. Can I sustain this week after week? Am I truly capable? Will I manage to deceive them again? Her reflections, laced with humor, shed light on the universal struggle of imposter syndrome, even among seasoned professionals. Getty's humor persisted as she described her weekly battle with stage fright, confessing, I'm petrified every Friday. I can't believe I'm here. What if they realize I'm not up to it? Yet, despite her apprehensions, Getty's performances were flawless. Her portrayal of Sophia, brimming with wit and authenticity, belied her internal struggles. This incongruity between her private doubts and public success underscored the depth of her talent and professionalism, leaving an indelible mark on television history. Behind Dorothy's earrings. Picture the timeless depiction of Dorothy, brought to life by the commanding presence and distinctive voice of B. Arthur. Her towering stature, matched with those statement earrings that graced her ears, became emblematic of her character. Yet, hidden behind the glamour of those earrings, lay a poignant truth. B. Arthur didn't have pierced ears. In an era where pierced ears were not as common, especially in the realm of show business, many women, including B., relied on clip-on earrings. The costume department's insistence on Dorothy wearing large earrings meant enduring the discomfort of clip-ons. For the uninitiated, clip-on earrings are notorious for causing pain over prolonged periods. Through hours of filming, as scenes were meticulously captured, B. Arthur's ears bore the brunt of this discomfort. By the time the director called for the final cut, B.'s ears would be pulsating with agony. One can't help but wonder how many of Dorothy's witty remarks were fueled by genuine irritation caused by her earrings. It adds a layer of complexity to her character, reminding us that even iconic figures endure their own quiet battles behind the scenes. In reality, Estelle Getty was actually one year younger than her on-screen daughter. In the intriguing saga of Hollywood serendipity, Estelle Getty's transformation from a seasoned New York stage actress to the beloved TV character Sophia Petrillo unfolds with captivating allure. Reflecting on her journey in a 1992 interview with Sandy Newton, Getty reminisced about the initial confusion she experienced upon receiving the script. To her surprise, the role she assumed was for Dorothy turned out to be that of the sharp-tongued matriarch, Sophia Petrillo, orchestrated by her astute managers who envisioned her potential in Hollywood. While touring Los Angeles with Harvey Fierstein's play, Torch Song Trilogy, Getty's managers recognized an opportunity for her to venture into the realm of television. Their foresight proved auspicious when, a mere six weeks later, Estelle Getty secured the role that would become synonymous with her name, Sophia Petrillo in The Golden Girls. Despite her background in theater, Getty faced a unique challenge in portraying an octogenarian while being merely 60 herself. Yet her portrayal of Sophia showcased her remarkable acting prowess, seamlessly blending cantankerous wit with endearing charm. The dynamic chemistry between Getty and B. Arthur, who portrayed her on-screen daughter Dorothy, became a hallmark of the show. Beyond her acting skills, Getty's commitment to the role was palpable. During the final audition, she left an indelible impression by fully embracing Sophia's persona, donning the costume and makeup of a little old lady. Throughout her tenure on The Golden Girls, Estelle Getty's portrayal of Sophia earned her acclaim, garnering seven Emmy nominations and a well-deserved win in 1998. Despite the challenges of embodying a character significantly older than herself, Getty infused Sophia with depth and authenticity, captivating audiences worldwide. As the series finale approached, Getty's fondness for Sophia was palpable. In an interview with Sandy Newton, she expressed genuine affection for the character, emphasizing Sophia's admirable qualities as a caring, feisty, optimistic, and resilient woman. 
Getty's heartfelt portrayal not only endeared Sophia to viewers but also left an enduring legacy, solidifying her place in television history. Rue McClanahan maintained her wardrobe. Rue McClanahan, the beloved actress celebrated for her portrayal of the unforgettable Blanche Devereaux on The Golden Girls, left a legacy that transcended the confines of the screen. In a move reflective of her affection for Blanche's vivacious persona, McClanahan incorporated a unique provision into her contract. This clause granted her ownership of all the custom-made outfits donned by her character throughout the show's illustrious run, cementing her bond with Blanche well beyond the final curtain call. Yet, McClanahan's dedication to preserving Blanche's essence extended far beyond the realm of wardrobe collection. Actively curating a collection of props, souvenirs, and memorabilia from her time on The Golden Girls, she was driven by a heartfelt desire to share these cherished artifacts with her devoted fans. This act not only underscored her deep appreciation for the show's dedicated fan base, but also underscored the enduring impact that The Golden Girls had on popular culture. Tragically, Rue McClanahan's passing in 2010 left a void that could never be filled, but her legacy continued to shine brightly through the efforts of her close friend, Mark Laro. Determined to honor her memory in a meaningful way, Laro took up the mantle of preserving her legacy by establishing a dedicated website where friends and family could select personal mementos from McClanahan's collection. In a touching gesture of remembrance, the remaining memorabilia, including Blanche's iconic wardrobe and other significant artifacts, was made available for public sale. What truly distinguished this initiative was McClanahan's philanthropic ethos, as the proceeds from the sale were directed to charities and causes that held special significance to her. Through this act of generosity and compassion, McClanahan's spirit of giving continued to resonate long after her passing, ensuring that her legacy would endure alongside her unforgettable performances. Even in her absence, Rue McClanahan's impact continued to reverberate, as her possessions were repurposed to support causes that reflected her deeply held values, thereby perpetuating her legacy of kindness and generosity for generations to come. The dining table had just three chairs. The beloved image of the four golden girls gathered around the kitchen table, their laughter echoing as they share cheesecake and witty repartee, remains a cherished memory for fans worldwide. However, Sharp-eyed viewers might have noticed a curious detail. Only three chairs were arranged around the table. Why the inconsistency? Director Terry Hughes sheds light on this seemingly puzzling setup. As it turns out, the absence of a fourth chair wasn't a mere oversight. It was a strategic decision guided by technical considerations. Hughes reveals that in the realm of television production, every angle and composition matters. Ensuring that all characters are visible to the audience, without anyone seated with their back to the camera, is paramount. Thus, the choice to leave one side of the table bare of a chair was made to maintain visual clarity and enhance the dynamism of the scenes. This meticulous attention to detail speaks volumes about the show's commitment to visual storytelling. Regarding the seating arrangement, Hughes draws an analogy to the dynamics of a school bus, where once a character claimed a spot, it became theirs for the duration of the journey. In the Golden Girls case, Dorothy, portrayed by B. Arthur, held court in the middle seat. Meanwhile, Rose and Blanche, played by Betty White and Rue McClanahan respectively, alternated sides based on the practicality of exiting the room swiftly. And then there's Sophia, the indomitable matriarch portrayed by Estelle Getty, whose character defied convention at every turn. Instead of adhering to the standard chairs, Sophia often opted for a stool, embodying her rebellious spirit and adding an extra layer of charm to the scenes. This choice not only injected humor into the dynamics, but also underscored Sophia's fiercely independent nature, leaving an indelible mark on the hearts of viewers. Off-screen, Blanche and Dorothy didn't live glamorous live. In a revealing moment, Rue McClanahan peeled back the curtain on the behind-the-scenes dynamics of the Golden Girls, providing intriguing insights into her relationship with co-star B. Arthur. Despite the apparent chemistry between their characters on screen, McClanahan disclosed a surprising lack of warmth in their off-screen friendship. She candidly confessed, 
B. Arthur and I didn't have much of a relationship. McClanahan's reflections offered a glimpse into Arthur's personality, portraying her as a highly eccentric woman whose idiosyncrasies added layers of complexity to their interactions. One particularly intriguing detail McClanahan shared was Arthur's insistence on having Betty White accompany them for lunch, suggesting Arthur's preference for familiar company and dynamics. However, despite any personal differences, both actresses demonstrated consummate professionalism when the cameras rolled. The electric chemistry between their characters, Blanche and Dorothy, mesmerized audiences with their sharp-witted banter and palpable tension. This stark juxtaposition between their real-life relationship and on-screen portrayal underscores the actress's remarkable ability to set aside personal differences in service of delivering captivating performances that enchanted viewers for years to come. Arthur and White didn't always share the same perspective. The seamless on-screen chemistry between B. Arthur and Betty White in the iconic series The Golden Girls speaks volumes about their exceptional acting abilities. However, beneath the surface, the two actresses approached their craft in distinctly different ways, resulting in a dynamic relationship with its own intricacies. Betty White, renowned for her jovial and approachable demeanor, candidly revealed in a 2011 interview with Joy Behar that B. Arthur didn't seem particularly fond of her. White expressed genuine confusion, stating, I don't know what I ever did, but she was not that thrilled with me. But I loved B. This candid admission hinted at a discrepancy in their off-screen rapport, contrasting with the warmth they exuded on screen. In 2016, Matthew Sachs, Arthur's son, shed further light on their divergent work styles. According to Sachs, White's outgoing and sociable nature occasionally clashed with his mother's more focused and concentrated approach to acting. Sachs recalled instances during filming where production had to pause because Arthur preferred to remain focused, possibly even staying backstage, while White engaged with the audience, smiling and making connections. While Sachs acknowledged White's interactions as genuine gestures of kindness, considering fans had traveled far to attend live tapings. He recognized that his mother may not have appreciated this approach. He stressed the importance of maintaining focus and conserving energy during filming. Despite their differences, Sachs emphasized that there was no animosity between Arthur and White, both on and off screen. In fact, their friendship extended beyond the set. Sachs revealed that at one point, they lived close enough to carpool to work, showcasing a camaraderie that transcended any professional disparities. Beyond their work, Arthur and White bonded over shared passions, particularly their staunch support of LGBTQ rights, where they actively participated as advocates. Their mutual dedication to equality laid the groundwork for a deeper connection and camaraderie. Additionally, both actresses shared a love for animals. While Bee cherished her own pets, Betty's well-documented commitment to animal welfare saw her investing significant time and resources into the cause. These mutual interests served as points of connection, bridging any initial differences between them. Furthermore, Betty White's enduring enthusiasm for game shows added a playful dimension to their interactions. Even before The Golden Girls, Betty had established herself as a fixture in the game show circuit, captivating audiences and fellow contestants with her wit and intellect. This penchant for game shows persisted during filming breaks, with Betty often sneaking in an episode or engaging her co-stars in impromptu quizzes. Her playful nature served as a refreshing break from the rigors of filming, fostering a lighthearted atmosphere behind the scenes. In essence, while B. Arthur and Betty White may have approached their craft differently, their shared values, interests, and mutual respect ultimately solidified a friendship that transcended any professional disparities, enriching both their personal and professional lives. The actresses exhibited notable differences from their on-screen characters. Rue McClanahan, offering an insider's view on The Golden Girls, debunked any notion that the cast closely mirrored their on-screen personas. In a candid revelation, she emphasized the stark contrasts between the actors and their Golden Girl characters. Despite their convincing portrayals, the real lives of the cast members differed significantly from the fictional lives they portrayed. McClanahan, renowned for her portrayal of the man-crazy and glamorous Blanche Devereaux, 
humorously dismissed any comparison between herself and her character. She quipped, People ask me if I'm like Blanche, and my standard answer is, get serious, look at the facts. Blanche is a man-crazy, glamorous, extremely sexy, successful with men Southern Belle from Atlanta, Georgia, and I'm not from Atlanta. This statement underscored the clear distinction between her true identity and the character she embodied on screen. Contrary to assumptions that the cast might share similarities with their characters, McClanahan shed light on the individual traits of her co-stars. She pointed out Betty White as the one who differed the most from her character, Rose Nyland. McClanahan humorously remarked, Betty probably the least of all. She added, I would say Estelle Getty was more like Sophia, although she wasn't at all pushy or vitriolic. This acknowledgement hinted at the unique qualities of each actor and their ability to portray characters distinct from their own personalities. Estelle Getty, who portrayed the quick-witted Sophia Petrillo, infused her character with her own brand of humor. McClanahan noted Getty's suggestion to make the characters Jewish, reflecting Getty's own background. Despite differences, Getty's comedic sensibilities and New York flair contributed to the memorable portrayal of Sophia on the show. Describing B. Arthur, who played Dorothy Zebornak, as the straightest character, McClanahan highlighted the disparities in the life paths of the actor and character. She emphasized that Dorothy's setbacks were vastly different from B. Arthur's real-life success. McClanahan also praised Arthur's sharp wit and unique perspective on people. As for Betty White, McClanahan playfully quipped, And Betty White has nothing but brains. She's almost as smart as I am. This humorous remark showcased the camaraderie and playful banter among the cast members, unveiling the reality behind the cheesecake scenes. The Golden Girls not only left an indelible mark on television, but also influenced the culinary landscape, particularly in relation to cheesecake. The iconic scenes of the ladies congregating in the kitchen over slices of cheesecake became a beloved tradition for fans, shaping the way viewers perceive and enjoy this delectable dessert. The camaraderie and laughter shared by the Golden Girls over cheesecake added an extra layer of charm to these kitchen gatherings. However, behind the scenes, there were intriguing dynamics concerning the cast members' personal preferences. Betty White, famous for her portrayal of Rose Nyland, brought a quirky twist to the narrative. Despite her fondness for cheesecake in her personal life, White had a unique rule when it came to eating on camera. She refrained from consuming any food during scenes. This decision might come as a surprise to fans who delighted in watching the characters relish each mouthful. White's choice potentially added an element of mystery and fascination to Rose's interactions with the beloved dessert. On the other hand, Rue McClanahan, who embodied the vivacious Blanche Devereaux, debunked rumors suggesting she indulged in cheesecake with gusto. In reality, McClanahan revealed she merely pretended to eat the dessert during scenes, adding an amusing twist to the portrayal of Blanche's enjoyment. However, the most unexpected revelation came from B. Arthur, the straightforward Dorothy Zebornak. Despite the dessert's prominent role in the show, Arthur harbored a dislike for both cheesecake and the scenes involving it. This behind-the-scenes insight adds an ironic dimension to the iconic moments shared around the kitchen table, highlighting Arthur's skill in convincingly portraying characters, even when the on-screen delicacies didn't align with her personal tastes. These revelations offer a fascinating glimpse into the intricate dynamics at play behind the creation of such beloved television moments. Despite their differing preferences, the actresses' commitment to their roles and their ability to bring the characters to life contributed to the enduring appeal of The Golden Girls and its cherished kitchen scenes pushing boundaries, and challenging norms. The 1980s was a decade of more than just flashy neon leg warmers and synthesizer-heavy music. It was a time of shifting cultural norms and increasing social awareness. Television, as a powerful medium, played a crucial role in reflecting and shaping these changes. Enter the Golden Girls, a groundbreaking show that not only depicted older women leading vibrant lives, but also fearlessly tackled taboo topics of its time. Amidst the glitz and glamour, the Golden Girls fearlessly delved into contentious issues such as ageism, sexism, and the challenges of aging in a society obsessed with youth. 
Yet its impact extended beyond the surface. In an era overshadowed by the HIV-AIDS crisis, the show bravely addressed the epidemic, demystifying misconceptions and advocating for compassion and understanding. Moreover, the Golden Girls didn't shy away from exploring the topic of homosexuality, even in a time when LGBTQ representation on mainstream TV was sparse. While the character of Coco, the gay butler, was eventually phased out, possibly due to narrative reasons, its initial inclusion hinted at the show's willingness to push boundaries. Later episodes continued this exploration with nuanced storylines involving Blanche's struggle with her brother's homosexuality and Dorothy's lesbian friend developing feelings for Rose. These episodes weren't just groundbreaking. They challenged viewers to confront their biases and embrace the complexities of human relationships with sensitivity and grace. In doing so, the Golden Girls left an indelible mark on television history, paving the way for greater inclusivity and social awareness in the medium. In essence, The Golden Girls was more than just a sitcom. It was a trailblazer that dared to tackle tough issues with humor and heart. Its willingness to address taboo topics head-on and its commitment to portraying authentic and diverse characters set a new standard for television programming, leaving a lasting legacy that continues to resonate with audiences today. Adolescent girls sent them a considerable amount of fan mail. In a poignant reflection on the enduring influence of the Golden Girls, Rue McClanahan unveiled a fascinating aspect of the show's impact in an interview from the archives of the Academy of Television Arts and Sciences. McClanahan, shedding light on the show's profound resonance, shared that the cast received numerous heartfelt letters from teenage girls expressing a deep yearning to escape challenging home situations and move in with the Golden Girls. This unexpected revelation underscored the show's powerful ability to blur the lines between fiction and reality for its dedicated audience. McClanahan explained that these young viewers perceived the lives of the four characters, Blanche, Dorothy, Rose, and Sophia, as a mirror reflecting real-life relationships. The warmth, camaraderie, and unwavering support exhibited by the characters became a source of solace for teenagers navigating their own tumultuous home environments. The show's appeal went beyond humor and camaraderie. It lay in the sense of stability and unconditional friendship that the Golden Girls provided. The characters, portrayed by a stellar ensemble cast, appeared as surrogate grandmothers offering the kind of love and understanding these teenagers might have yearned for in their own lives. The universality of the themes explored on the show friendship, love, and resilience in the face of life's challenges resonated deeply with viewers of all ages, transcending generational boundaries. The fact that teenage girls wrote letters expressing a desire to join the Golden Girls in their fictional home speaks volumes about the show's ability to create a relatable and aspirational universe. McClanahan's revelation shines a light on the profound impact television can have on viewers' lives providing not just entertainment, but a sense of comfort, belonging, and inspiration. A notable lineup of guest stars. The Golden Girls wasn't just any sitcom. It was a vibrant showcase of guest stars, adding layers of charm and cultural resonance. With a mix of seasoned veterans and emerging talents, these guest appearances became synonymous with the show's wide-reaching appeal. Among the illustrious guests were rising stars such as George Clooney, Jeffrey Tambor, Mario Lopez, and Quentin Tarantino, who graced the screen before soaring to Hollywood stardom. Their stint on the Golden Girls propelled their careers, introducing them to a diverse audience and opening doors to future triumphs. Yet, it wasn't just the newcomers who found their place on the show. Icons like Mickey Rooney, Dick Van Dyke, Debbie Reynolds, Jerry Orbach, Fred Willard, and Burt Reynolds also left their mark infusing the series with depth and prestige. Securing a guest spot on The Golden Girls was the dream of many young actors at the time. The show's massive fan base guaranteed widespread exposure, catapulting careers to new heights. Moreover, the presence of established actors in guest roles heightened the anticipation for viewers, enriching the viewing experience. The eagerness of renowned stars to grace The Golden Girls underscored the show's reputation and the creative atmosphere it fostered. By striking a balance between the chemistry of its main cast 
and the fresh energy of guest stars, the series found a winning formula that captivated audiences and professionals alike. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next video.